Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel has just hit. Bro, they got Ghost Trick Mansion? Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel has just hit its one year anniversary. And since I played the game a lot when it first came out, I decided to re-download the game and see what's up. Master Duel always had the potential to be something great, so after not playing it for months, I was really excited at the idea of what could have been added. Well, after playing the game and climbing back up the ranks of ranked, did anything change? The answer is, yeah, but not a lot. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not like the game hasn't had any updates since release, because it has. Quite a lot, actually. From new modes, cards, cosmetics, and even a casual match option. A mode in which you can fight random players online without any effect on your ranking. Thank you, Konami, this should have been here at launch, but I guess half a year is better than not at all. But is this game worth getting back into if you're not already playing it? For hardcore Yu-Gi-Oh players and fans, I'd say... Maybe, but leaning more towards the yeah. At the end of the day, besides real life or YGO Pro, Master Duel is still a solid, streamlined, and visually beautiful way to play Yu-Gi-Oh either at home or on the go, even though their card list might still be lacking here and there. For the casual audience, who may have just been looking for a quick fun card game to play or downloaded it on release and just wanted to check it out again, you might want to keep this game uninstalled. To get into it, if you haven't played this game since its initial launch window, Konami has done a hell of a job updating this game. Kinda. Besides your standard rank mode, dual room, and your occasional events, we now have that casual mode I mentioned earlier, and also a team mode? Yeah, I use that in my main deck. Yes, boy, let's do this! Okay. Yo, guys, I gotta tell you, I got the worst hand I've seen in my fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro, I really wish this guy would go. Up, oh, he forfeited. I guess I win. <laughs> you... <laughs> no <laughs> way! <laughs> we won, boy! Yo. Woo! Woo! Damn, bro, I really wish I had participated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is quite possibly my favorite update to this game, allowing you and your friends to enter either a 3v3 or 5v5 style format of dueling. Added back in November, each player fights their opponent and the battle is decided in a best of format. Yu-Gi-Oh has always struggled to come up with new and creative game modes since its initial release, but this was such a fun new addition that I can look past the fact that it's just literally a bunch of 1v1s happening at the same time. Dueling alongside your friends with the goal of beating an opposing team is such a simple and fun premise that I'm surprised it's never been done before. But boy is it such a blast to play. As for your standard ranked, it's pretty much the same it's been since release, except now with an added diamond tier. But I did end up getting lost in this again, and tried getting back into rank even though I haven't played in months. But because it's been so long, the game put me back all the way into the starting rank. Which is cool, I don't mind, I, I mean free gems, but I'm so sorry to all the people who were just getting into this game and clearly using starter decks, I didn't mean to go that hard on you, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Besides the online content, yes you have the solo mode and yes it constantly gets updated. But besides little rewards here and there, it still, after all this time, hardly feels worth it. I personally enjoy the solo mode a lot, but I know most people would probably just skip this altogether. It's an excellent way to learn new archetypes and practice different deck styles and even learn some lore. But the rewards are still minimal and it still feels like it could have been handled differently. The biggest issue I have with this mode is arguably the best thing about it, and that's its lack of deck relevancy. For my fellow duelists, understand that this is coming from a gamer's perspective and not a TCG player perspective. What I'm saying is why would the average player, both casual and hardcore, want to learn a deck like Karakuri and Digital Bugs when Labyrinth and Vendred are out in the shop on a selection pack? The main point I'm trying to make is that I love solo mode for its ability to explain and introduce new archetypes to players who would have otherwise ignored them. But at the same time, most casual gamers will never want to do it because <laughs> why? 
The cards obtained aren't worth anything, and most of the decks used aren't popular and don't appeal to any type of meta or are even cool. Not to mention that a lot of the time you're forced to play with these decks and can't advance in the solo mode without hitting certain milestones. Does solo mode have to appeal to everyone? No! But imagine how great it'd be if alongside the Ghost Trick solo gate that Konami wanted to add, we got a new Despia gate to coincide with its introduction to the game, giving players both casual and hardcore the chance to interact with the deck that's currently in the shop, and somewhat relevant. What is this deck about? Why does this monster look so cool? Let me just check out the solo gate and see how this plays. Just looking from a casual perspective, there's no incentive to this mode whatsoever, and over the course of the year, it's remained exactly the same. On a more positive note, while cosmetics at the end of the day are just cosmetics, Konami has seemingly slowly grown their shop to feature more things no player will ever need but are there. And I'm actually surprised with how little content we have in the shop. I'm really trying not to complain, but with how little solo gates and game modes were added in this game, I'm thoroughly surprised that Konami didn't at least try to milk this game for cosmetics even further than what's here. The options that are available in the shop are still nice and visually look really, really cool. I literally purchased everything Ghost Trick related the moment I saw it. But with how little there is in the shop, decks like Medolce's just get completely left out of all the fun. I think the coolest addition to the shop is without a doubt the amount of selection packs available. If you've played this game in the early days, then you'll remember that besides secret packs, there were always three packs in the shop. Only two of them being selection and the last one being the standard battle pack. But now? Yeah, it's not much, but you'll never hear me argue about variety. Not only are these new selection packs slightly more abundant, but they're relevant. With newer archetypes like Sword Soul and Labyrinth now being the center of attention, which are not only new to Master Duel, but new-ish in the actual TCG. I would sit here and list all the new archetypes that have been added, but this isn't that kind of video. Just know that Sue ships are here, baby! Other than that, if it feels like I haven't talked about any major crazy changes, it's because, besides what was mentioned, this game hasn't had any major crazy changes. Which hey, listen, I wasn't expecting this game to be completely different when I came back, but it's really the same exact game it was a year ago. And you can take the good and the bad from that. Gems are still a pain to earn unless you're playing this game on a consistent basis. Which is expected for a free to play, so I won't even really complain about that. Newer players still should have no problem making one or two really good decks after playing this game for just a little bit. But with solo mode, while lacking in relevancy and even a proper story, it still does an excellent job on teaching new players how to play this game and introducing new archetypes that would otherwise just get ignored. The card pool is bigger than ever, though building a new deck from scratch may still be as annoying as ever. Events are still fun, creative, and are a great way to experiment with non-traditional formats and force players to think outside the box. Master Duels is still an amazing way to play Yu-Gi-Oh! even after all this time. And I remember on release, all of my friends were playing this game religiously, even the ones that weren't fans of Yu-Gi-Oh! in the slightest. And though this game failed to carry through the momentum it started off with, it's still fun, still enjoyable, and I still have no problem climbing ranks even though I'm using a non-meta deck like Time Thieves. Here's hoping Konami continues to show this game love and update it even more throughout the coming years. Enjoy the rest of your day, and take care. Huh? You ran out of time? Oh my god. You <laughs> You had it! That's fucking garbage, bro.